So Jill, thank yeah. you for inviting us to your house today to see your beautiful garden. Um, you. What I'm particularly fascinated in is your transition from, from medicine to horticulture. How did that happen? Well, I think I'd always had a science background and the more you look at plants, the more you work out they are fascinating things. How do they grow? What, or perhaps in this garden, why weren't they growing? What was wrong with where I put them? And so you begin to question what you're doing and then you read around the topic and yes. you find out, well, you put it in the wrong place. You, you know, you didn't read the handbook, so shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and it went on from there. And as I said, when I retired, I needed something to do. We have this big, big garden, which is gorgeous. And so you grow into it, but like a plant. Yes. Yeah. So you're no longer in medicine. I'm no longer in no. medicine. But you, you did it. You, you studied it, studied horticulture at degree level, I think, didn't yep, you? Yep. And then went on and did a master's in, in agronomy. Agronomy, which um, for the geography of where we are was the next sort of plant option that I could locate, as it were. <laughs> yes. And agronomy is a lot of plant science and obviously um, crop crop science. And I thought at the time I wondered if I would be interested in doing um, crop trials because I've not. As an oncologist, I've done a lot of clinical trials with new drugs and things. And I thought, well, there are a lot of <coughs> um, herbicides and um, insecticides and things that are used on crops, and perhaps that would be an interest for me. But um, having done the Masters, and it was super fun, and it was a great place, a lot of fun, I worked out that, no, perhaps it wasn't for me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> But it was good to have established that, and so uh, I just settled back into conventional horticulture. Yes, yeah. Now you've been here about 40 years, you, about you 40 tell years me, so, yeah. and it, it, I suppose the garden's been in a bit of various transitions because you had children for the first half of that, That's and right. then when you reclaimed it for yourself, indeed, um, indeed. You, you set to work as I can see, and there's been a lot done here. Um, what did you inherit when you first moved here 20 years ago, and, and what's changed? Right. Or, or, or do you need <laughs> three hours to tell me? <laughs> Quite a lot. When we first came, um, we bought the house from an elderly couple and obviously they'd sort of been winding back from what they were doing. And so we had a rather decrepit pond and stream system. We had a sunken rose garden that was very overgrown with weeds. And otherwise we had a very large vegetable patch and a hedge right across the middle of the garden, oh. separating two patches of grass. Um, which was fine with children because you could play football and all the rest of it, but um, it was a bit sterile really. Uh, but then at that point, neither of us, neither my husband nor myself, were particularly knowledgeable on plants, so we just thought, well, okay, we'll, you know, suck it and see. Yes, yeah. Now, what I have noticed, there are a few wonderful specimens around here. I mean, one that we've got right by us that's just out of shot, of course, these wonderful geraniums. Um, Madurence, that one, isn't it? I always get muddled up with palmatum. Yeah. Um, now, you bought that as a plant a few year, well, several years ago. Many, many years ago, in fact, yes, from a, a, a visit to a National Trust house where they were selling them in, looking amazing in, in big pots, because, as you say, it, it's a big plant. Yes. Um, but it's one end of the geranium spectrum, which we love. Um, and it self seeds beautifully, so it's provided endless generations of plants uh, for everybody. Yes, so that's all from seedlings. But another amazing plant in the garden is the cedar behind you. It's probably 30, 40 feet tall that you grew from seed. Amazing. We, yes, we grew this from seed, um, in, and we planted it in 1981, which really to commemorate the royal wedding. Yes, of Charles and Di. And the seed itself came from. Althorpe House, which is uh, Lady Di's patch, as it were. Yes. And um, 40 years later, it's, as you say, a, a big tree. Yes, yeah. Now, the, the, the main design of the garden is made up of these concentric circles, starting in the middle, um, where you originally had the sundial, but that, I right. know that's moved a bit. Yeah. Um, and then you've got this amazing um, construction with roses growing over Indeed. the top. Yep. And then we move out to the sort of herbaceous borders all, all the way around it. Yep. What, what gave you the idea of working from these circles initially? Um, it was our 20th wedding anniversary, so circles and two. Yes. <laughs> Simple as that. Simple as that. Now, you're very lucky in that you do you work at a nursery some of the time, don't you? Yep. Um, so you get yep. to see probably new plants coming through and so on. Um, but there's some other um, voluntary work you do that I was quite interested That's in. That's right, yep. Um, volunteer gardener at um, Solgrave 
Uh, that Soulgrave Manor, is that? Soulgrave Manor, which is George Washington's ancestral home. Yes. Um, so that's sort of 15th, 16th century, and obviously Washington was later than that. He um, pushed off to America because presumably he wasn't in the <laughs> <laughs> benefit line for that sort of property. Um, and I'm a volunteer gardener for um, uh, South North Hans. Yes. Um, you, you said you work for, is it a charity you work for where you look after? It's a, it's a, a South North Hans sort of volunteer bureau system and they run various schemes and um, Garden Buddies is one of them. Garden Buddies, that's Garden right. Buddies. And so there's a, a coordinator and a van and kit and three, four, five volunteers can go out to three or four gardens a morning and you just do whatever the, the client wants. And that'll be helping people who what, who aren't able to look after their own gardens anymore? That's right, they're, they're too old or frisic or whatever. Yes. And, um, so, you may, so you might be mowing, you might be strimming, you might be trimming hedges, you might be doing all sorts of things. And yes. you never know until you get there. No, no. <laughs> but it's, it's a lot of fun and it, it's great to see you know, being able to give pleasure to people because at the end of the day their garden is often their, their green lung so they need to be able to be out there and in a safe environment. Yes, yeah. Well Jill, thanks for your time. Me and Stephen had a wonderful morning here, really fascinating, it's lovely, lovely to see. Lovely to see you, lovely to have you. Sir. Well thank you, thank so I uh, hope you enjoy the rest of the weekend. The sun isn't shining today, no. um, but we've needed this rain, we've been desperate oh, we for indeed. it. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, enjoy the rest of the weekend, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank thanks. you. Okay. And don't forget your seedlings. I won't forget my seedlings. Thank you very much.